I'm leaving the chateau now and I really don't feel like it if I'm honest, but I'm leaving it in very safe hands with my friends. And I promised my mother I would go and see her and Percy in South Africa. The elusive Nick and his family and Michael Potts are all coming to South Africa too. So it's Lalande goes abroad. Safe trip. Thank you, Ian. See you soon. Finish mummy's kitchen. I will. <laughs> I only just made it to Heathrow to go and see Mummy because my Ryanair flight was cancelled from Limoges. They had to put us up overnight in Limoges and I arrived just in Stamsted this morning. So I've already been travelling for over 24 hours just to get to Heathrow from the Chateau de la Lande. Luckily I've been able to rush through everything as quickly as possible because I'm only travelling with hand luggage which is actually a bit of a triumph for a two week holiday in South Africa. You will not believe what I've done, I missed my flight. I was sitting at the wrong gate. I think I was so frazzled after 28 hours of travel to get here. Honestly, when I realized what I had done, I was nearly crying, I was shaking. And the super nice man at the British Airways ticketing desk has put me onto the next flight for free. And it's leaving in an hour. I've made it onto the flight. Um, goodbye, London, South Africa, here I come. A bit frazzled, but I've arrived in Joburg. I have, as predicted, missed my flight to Durban. So now I'm going to see if I can book onto the next one. I've got my boarding pass. They put me onto the next flight. So I've now been traveling for 46 and a half hours in what has to be the world's most ridiculous journey of all time. But I'm about to board the last plane. I have literally spent two days in a row staring at clouds. It's so warm and sunny, it's finally worthwhile. Do you think she'll turn up anytime soon? <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> Hello. 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 We're arriving now at the beach house on quite a miserable day. And there's already a monkey to greet me. You love going out for dinner, don't you, mummy? Too fine. I wanted a piece of cheese at home. <laughs> Okay, well, a piece of cheese here. Yeah. Are you having a bit of cheese, mummy? Mm. Delicious. Hmm? Exactly what I would have had at home. Yeah, well, there was no point bringing you. <laughs> this is love, isn't it? Yes, we have the same dish. The I same starter so. and the same main course. Absolutely. That's love. He's copying me always. Well, I always find out that whatever I have, I think I should have had what she's got. So tonight <laughs> I, I took hers. I shall do the driving, I think. And we shall walk home. <laughs> I've woken up in my bedroom at Mummy's house with the sound of the sea, it's so loud here. I'm going to show you the view now. I wonder if you can even hear me over the sound of the sea. My parents bought a very ugly beach cottage, made it into a really beautiful house, but my bedroom was part of the original old house still needs a lot of work doing even though we've been here for years we haven't got round to it but it's all worth it for the view there's my dressing table it's a little bit psychedelic in here and you can see everything really needs replacing but i love being here it's one of the most relaxing places on earth and then i have a really old-fashioned bathroom <laughs> with a gray plastic suite but regardless of however old this bathroom is, I'm happy every time I walk in because of my Yves de Long towels. This shot of yellow every morning makes me happy. But wait till you see what mummy and daddy did with the rest of the house. Right, we're going down the long corridor past my mother's bedroom. Let's see if it's tidy enough to show. There's my mother's room. She has the best view in the house because this whole wall of windows can be opened up. Then there's the mezzanine, which is actually my favorite spot in the entire house. My father made the most amazing paintings for this house. And here you can see the first of the African art that daddy and I were buying. Every single year we go to the same shop and get something different. And since his death, whenever I've been in Africa, I actually haven't been here for about four years, uh, but I've been going back to the same shop and getting things. These are three Zulu hats. They weren't purposefully supposed to match the fire extinguisher, but there we go. <laughs> and there's one of our masks and a shield. And this is the view from the mezzanine. 
I can't believe I haven't been here for four years. I just couldn't justify even the flight to get here the last few winters, but last year was so much better with our rentals that I could come this year and it's amazing. Now we'll head downstairs to see mummy. And there is one of my father's huge paintings. And there's the village of South Broome. It's very pretty, those little houses just nestled in amongst a subtropical vegetation. Daddy and I painted the blocks of different color here. And we also designed some of the bits of furniture. These huge colorful blocks, they're getting old now. Here's the dining room area. And this is a table that my father and I also designed, but it wasn't supposed to have glass on it, but we had to put the glass on to protect it, but it makes it too tall. I love this painting of his. You can see two crocodiles, but my favorite painting by far is this one. There's a buffalo, a lion, I think a bit of an antelope. And here's one of the pieces of African art that I bought since my father died, but I know this would have been his favorite one of all. And the really exciting news is that the elusive Nick and his family are arriving today. So their rooms are all ready for them. It's the first time that his wife, Marie and son Antoine are going to see it. And here's the room that's always been Nick's. I love the really lush greenery that you see from this room with the sea in the background. Nick's bathroom was redone a few years ago, so his shower is a little bit swankier than mine. He has a way nicer bath and lovely stone. But does he have yellow towels? No, he does not. And Antoine will be in the bedroom just across the corridor, which has lovely Zulu rattan bowls. So this is how you two live when you're not working hard at La Lande. We needed a little stop. A little stop. Mm. So as you can see, Mummy usually lives somewhere just a touch more modern than the chateau. She's the trendy one of us. And look at these amazing palm trees in flower at the moment. I love the drive to the airport through Zululand. It's so beautiful. We've come to the Waffle House for Marie and Antoine's first lunch out. <laughs> and the elusive Nick is actually here, but he's... Oh, there he is. He's waving with his knife. Excellent. Oh, and I have hummus and avocado waffles. Percy, I like what you've gone for. Yep, banana waffle with sugar. Very nice. What Marie, better? what are you having? A vegetarian having? option. I'm compensating for my son who's having beef and kidney. Yeah. So. Beef and kidney waffle? Yeah. <laughs> Not many English boys would order that <laughs> if you are brave. We're going to go down to the beach now. It's actually surprisingly rare for me to go down there. It's like at La Lande. I spend all my time indoors happily getting on with whatever I have to do, but I'm being forced for a walk. This is our path down to the beach. And there are black mambas on the property, so we try to make quite a lot of noise as we walk through this bushy area. And now we're on the nature reserve that runs all the way along the coast. It's very, very narrow. See? Just go under these trees and we come to the beach. La 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 Who's afraid of the black mamba trying to make as much noise as possible? So the beach isn't very crowded here. Are you going in the water, Nikki? I don't want to. I've got a book instead. You can tell I'm not going in because my watch is on. It's my excuse. Oh, I'd love to go in, but uh, I forgot to take my watch off. Bit by bit, I show you more and more of the elusive Nick. That is the shadow of his head. There are no shark nets here, so when we do go swimming, we go down to a spot called Granny's Pool. And it's a safe swimming pool into the sea. You can see the walls of it, and this provides a really safe place to swim. It's so strange to think you haven't been here before. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's so great. There they all are, but I think I'm better off here. I found the perfect spot in the shade. That's the best sight of the day. Seeing black and white children playing together gives me hope for the future of this country. I'm much more of a paddler in life. <laughs> it's so impossible to tell where the house is that I left my slippers there. There are the marker slippers. 
And look what I see. Can you see just on the mezzanine, Mummy and Percy? We're home! Hey. Hello! Hey. Was it nice? Was wonderful! Where's our gin and tonic? You're bringing me to a ball camp, Mummy. You know how to keep me happy. It may not be France, but we can find treasures anywhere. We just need to root them out. It's absolutely packed full of things. I'll have to really hunt. What do you think of the mirror, Mummy? It's not bad for 18 It's pounds. quite a flattery mirror, actually, isn't it? Oh, you're pleased with what you see inside? <laughs> Under a massive pile of coffee tables, I found a table I like that I think will look really pretty on Mummy's mezzanine. Will it fit in Percy's car? Great, thank you so much. Michael Potts isn't arriving until next week, but we've come to have dinner with his family. And there is Michael Potts's mummy. <laughs> this is about as African as a scene gets. Millions of ridge bags bowling everyone over and bush in the background. You call your fish? Yeah. You go knock, 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 knock. <laughs> it's always that. It's always that. <laughs> Wow! Nature is to stop the kingfishers and the herons. So we get a couple of kingfishers in South Africa. Yeah. One's about that size. Yeah. He's called a pied kingfisher. And he will eat the little ones, the babies. Mm. And then you get a big one called a giant kingfisher. And he will eat ones that size. Okay, so these happy. are safe. Are they safe from herons? No. Oh, if you see, no. there's some little ones about that big. Mm. And that's why the fences are around because the Heron doesn't like landing in water. He likes to walk into water. So putting a fence up stops okay. Mr. Heron. We've had grey herons having an absolute feast <laughs> on koi. And in about a year's time, it'll all go. Because then they'll be that big. Okay, so you will eventually be taking the netting off. Yeah. Okay. Judy, could you tell us the story of the <laughs> grandfather of this dog? I can. <laughs> he used to belong to one of the game wardens up at the Kruger and um, so he'd go out on patrol with them. And unbeknownst to everybody there was a lion in the bush and as dogs do when they go out they kind of like yeah we're going for a walk we're going for a walk and as it turns back this lioness oh, came in and nailed the, yeah. the male and what they didn't know was that the female was already pregnant and he is one of the grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of those puppies that she was pregnant with went on to save the ranger from a buffalo attack. The buffalo didn't charge the warden and chase the dogs and save the day. Well done. Colin has the most incredible wood-fired oven and these have come out of it. This hasn't and come out of the wood-fired <laughs> oven. Mm. I know someone who's going to be jealous. Your brother. <laughs> There we are. Whoa. That's the remnants. Something about the pots men and wood fired ovens, isn't there? Yep. You just can't stay away from them. It's really good. Oh, melting. I just popped downstairs to get my morning cup of tea, but I'm speechless walking back to my bedroom because it's so beautiful. This house catches me unawares like this. It doesn't look as though anyone else is up yet. So I'm just going to start on this week's vlog in bed. Really, the miracle is that my mother ever leaves here to come and live with me at La Lande, and I'm so grateful to her because here she doesn't have to work and at La Lande she doesn't stop. She works from morning till night helping me. I can't believe how lucky I am to have her. Cuckoo! <laughs> We're going out to a coffee estate that I've been to a few times called Beaver Creek and it's just a lovely atmosphere there. They have cakes and you can taste all sorts of different coffees. Actually, just on our way out to Beaver Creek, I have been told by Percy and Mummy that there's a present for me. A lady that said she would like to present you with some paintings. This is so kind. My goodness, it's amazing. Her paintings appear in Dubai. Oh, that is so kind of her. Oh, I love it. This is so wonderful. Well, this has to come back to La Lande with me. Well, this is extremely exciting. I think that the one on the right, the blue one, looks really good here in the beach house. And I think that the woman with the hat is going to come back with me to La Lande. Here we are at the coffee farm. And here are the coffee beans growing. Isn't it incredible how they look quite like peppercorns? They just grow along the stem. 
And then you can see in different stages of ripeness, there go yellow, and there's a red one here. Oh, there's a couple of red ones inside. I don't think it's enough to make one cup of coffee yet though. Look Stephanie how this looks like inside. You have the, the red bay, and then inside you have the two. You can really see two yeah. coffee beans, clearly. Voila. There's just too many coffees to choose from. Mally and I have been a bit naughty. Um, <laughs> coffee with coffee and chocolate cake, excellent. I think it's very important to try coffee in all its forms. Chocolate and caramel. With the hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And cream. On our way home, we've been driving past a macadamia nut tree and I've never seen one before. Isn't that incredible? I love macadamias. I think they're my favorite nut. And look, here's a banana tree. So many in one pod. So have you found a spot for the mirror, mummy? What do you think? It's going to be excellent there when it's high up. That brightens up a little dark corner, it's perfect. doesn't it? Yes. Very good. Thank you, sweetheart. But white. Here's the spot that we found for the table. Doesn't it look pretty under daddy's painting? I think it really finishes off the mezzanine. What's happening over here? Oh, oh, oh. You has to making calculations. Oh, uh, many calculations. Can you see I the calculations? There's a lot of different marks going on here, Percy. <laughs> measure twice, cut once. This is measured one, two, three, four times. <laughs> and no cutting at all. <laughs> and no cutting at all. Ah, oh, majestic, Percy. You can laugh as much as you like, but the end result is counting. <laughs> the end result is superb. Uh, except it's off centre. It's exactly where Too the... far this way. Let me, let me do a little bit off. Are we off? Yes, it's off centre. <laughs> By three centimetres. Take two. Well, actually, it's take six, isn't it, Percy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm laughing at a man holding a hammer. It's not a good idea. <laughs> oh, now that, that is lovely. That is lovely, and it looks beautiful here. Thank you, Goethe. This is wonderful. We're out to celebrate me hitting 10,000 followers on Instagram. It's very exciting and everything on the menu appears to involve porcini mushrooms at the moment, which is lucky because they're my favourites. Cheers! Oh, ravioli with prawns. And mummy's having what I usually have here. I forced yes. myself to try something else, which is the ravioli with lamb and asparagus. what I've spotted. This is outrageous behavior in a public space. <laughs> well, the reason for this is because I have to console her. Why do you have to console her? She says, you said she had no taste. <laughs> and I've never said such a thing. So you implied it by changing all my window uh, designs. Yes, my, well, thank goodness I changed your window design. Oh, we like it the way it was. <laughs> Mummy, in her infinite wisdom, it had made perfect. a window design for my bedroom so safe that you couldn't open the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you describe what you had planned for this room, Mummy? Well, much the same as yes. what is here now. And this was going to be a blank piece of glass. So that I couldn't have opened it. No, but you've got these that you could have opened. Brilliant. That would have been my sole view of the sea unencumbered. I could have just looked through this little peak here. It and would have been a crime. And she said you called me a fuddy daddy daddy. So I thought. Yes, I called you. Well, I have never in my life called you, you a fuddy to say daddy. It. You didn't dare to say it. But I you said, meant. mummy, I said exactly yes. what I meant, which was that Percy looks very spiffing today. <laughs> Can I just show everyone Percy's outfit? I said spiffing and I meant spiffing. Not fuddy duddy at all, very far from it. <laughs> as well as giving me those two amazing paintings, Gerda gave me some old uh, catalogues and books that she didn't want anymore. And this one is the Art of Vogue covers. And I'm going to actually turn it into a whole wall of Vogue covers framed in my dressing room. 
Look, look how beautiful they are. Are you excited? Doesn't, he doesn't look that excited, I'll be honest, but I am. Oh, I think this one will definitely go up. That's very La Lande. So this is a project I'm going to do as soon as I get home. We're at the golf course, having a very, very healthy meal. <laughs> And salad in the middle. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, group salad. Focus. No, true, group salad. Um, and you're going to play golf? Uh, we will try for Antoine, who that's his new passion. Do you like golf? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very much. And it must be one of the most beautiful golf courses yeah, in the world. Turn, turn around, <laughs> Stephanie. I can't turn that way or we'd see the elusive Nick. <laughs> Hang on, I'll turn off and turn on again. Yeah. Fair, we managed to avoid Nick. There, you see the golf course goes straight down to the sea. Bonne chance. Cool. Did you enjoy it? Yes. <laughs> it's my last night at the beach house. Tomorrow I've been invited by Nick and Marie to join them on safari, which is really exciting and I can't wait, but I am very sad to leave. And we're having a big final party. Look, look at the party. The party has started. Michael's brother, Michael's family are here, and Percy's family are here. Where is he? Where is he? Can you tell me the defining characteristics of a Colin burger? Well, a Colin burger is a burger that has no bread. So it has a lettuce leaf with a little bit of cheese. There. Mm. And then you gracefully pick up the burger, Patty, and put it in That was like very graceful. A very graceful. A few onions. Nice. I like the way you're and going you, with this. You rip them up to extract the flavour. <laughs> Here's your burger. Thank you very much. Done. I am extremely excited tonight because Colin has brought Glenelli wine from Stellenbosch. The daughter of the woman who owns this estate once came to stay in our bed and breakfast at Lalande and she told me the story of her mother. And I think that her mother is my new life inspiration. At the age of 80, she sold a very famous vineyard in France and bought a farm in Stellenbosch in South Africa and started a new vineyard. And that is Glenelli. And maybe next week when I am in the wine lands, I will try and go and show you this place. But it's a woman of 80, a French woman, who went and started a new vineyard and a new life at 80. And I cannot think of anything much more inspirational than that. Well, the burgers were good, but today is pancake day. So we're having pancakes for dessert. Next week's vlog should be great because I'm going to be showing you a safari, also taking you to the wine lands and to Cape Town. So I'm already looking forward to making that one. See you next week.